first, followed by CM Steve. Okay. And then I'll just cover any quick updates on my end on the back side of this. Welcome everyone to another BitShares open source hangout on the Beyond Bitcoin network. Today is Friday, July 28, 2017, and this is episode 31. We're joined as we are every week by members of the BitShares community, which anyone who holds these tokens has a vote in our community and therefore can join these hangouts. So feel free to join these entrepreneurs and crypto nerds who are interested in using the BitShares blockchain to take us above and beyond Bitcoin and its capabilities, and indeed what is proving to be the capabilities of the entire crypto ecosystem combined. So with that said, we do have a weekly hangout here where people can voice their opinion via an RSVP thread on steamit.com. You can join steamit.com, check out our thread there and post a potential worker proposal or a topic that you feel is important for the ecosystem. So feel free to join there, post it, maybe even join up and speak. The people who speak at these hangouts, they earn beyond bits equal to the number of upvotes that we receive. So if we receive $500 on, uh, on our post, we will give out 500 beyond bits to the people who were speaking at our hangouts about specific topics that they have RSVP'd on. This is in addition, of course, to the upvotes that most of them receive that give them a good amount of money in and of themselves. So with that said, we have three different uh, speakers that are gonna be this, here this week to talk about various issues. Talkinator is going to be joining us and talking first a little bit about his BitShares fees report. Uh, he's been doing this for a little while now, and he's giving us a weekly report on the collected fees. Uh, is it a monthly report, I believe? Monthly, uh, yes. A monthly report. Talkinator has a sexy voice. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you. Thank you. For, and this one is going to be for the month of June. And then we're going to move on to CM Steam. And he's going to be talking a little bit about his BitShares activity this week. Uh, GitHub pull requests for BSIPs 19, 20, 21, and 22 submitted. There's something called Hadoop Map Reduce Brainstorming, which is something that he's going to be talking about and has a GitHub uh, and BitShares talk thread on. And algorithm-based assets for the BitShares decks. And then we're going to end this hangout today with a few uh, reminders, uh, just a couple quick updates. One would be with the coin market cap, the blockchain is hiring ad campaign. I'm going to give a really quick whale shares and beyond bit update. And uh, I would like to talk a little bit if we have time, every hangout about the possibility of a bit shares based a BitShares forum based on Chain BB, where people can start earning tokens for posting. So, with that said, I'll go ahead and I'll ask Talkinator, are you ready to, to oh, give your updates? On Zoom, yep, ready to go. Okay, so feel free to go ahead and speak up. Thanks. So I recently prepared and posted on Steemit um, and also in the forums uh, the report for June 2017, which also includes the various uh, collected fees from the months prior to that going all the way to the blockchain's uh, start. And for the month of June, the uh, network had collected 1.6 million BTS, bit shares for 9.3 million operations. And that was just for the month of June. And within the month of June, the leading, the leading operation that brings in those fees as is the asset creation operation. And in general, that is the leading operation for the whole network with the way the fees have been structured. 
And so for the month of June, that was 64% of the fees were collected were just for asset creation. So that's for creating, let's say, a special three or four or multiple letter um, asset, usually user to issue asset. Uh, then far below that for the month of June were also account upgrades, like moving from up to lifetime membership. And then also at a similar number at around 15% were account creations. And so those were the top three leading operations for the month of June. And if you compare that just overall in terms of in general, since the blockchain's inception, the account, uh, the asset creation brings in half of all the fees uh, that uh, BitShares 2.0 has collected. So that is just a leading operation type for the for the network. And I think also, and just one last thing that was interesting, I think, since the last report that I prepared in April was that just the increase in the number of operations just over the past uh, three, four months. So that's gone up. It used to be around the 1 million, uh, roughly 1 million operations per month. And, uh, and then during the past two months, it's jumped up to 9 million, both for June and for May. So there's been a significant increase in the number of operations on the blockchain. And I think that wraps up uh, kind of a summary view of the report. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. So 1.6 million BTS were collected. For June. And that how many new tokens were created? That that was really that's really interesting to me because like uh, we've had some initiatives, so like we've created a lot of tokens, and I was just pretty interested in that. Uh, if you give me a minute, I'll, I think I might be able to look that up. While you do that, I'll go ahead and I'll just give the rundown of what calculation I came up with. Uh, given a, a bit share token each being Twelve cents. That comes down to one hundred ninety-two thousand dollars just for the month of June. I mean, it was fourteen uh, cents last time I looked. It was eleven cents yeah. last time I bought it, and seventeen I think cents last time I sold out. So where does that come from? Come on, man. Yeah, I think it's thirteen. Um, I think it's thirteen cents right now as we speak. Well, aren't you the fucking hullabaloo? So I was able to find that, and I for, wait, hold on, I'm not sure I'm looking at the right month. Give me a minute. Yeah, so for the month of June, and I think I'm looking at the right data, the, the number of assets that were created for the month of June were, were 70. And so, and depending on the length of the, how many characters go into that character, go into that asset, the fee for the asset will be different. But for the month of June, it looks like it was 70. Does that answer your question, Willis? Yeah, so there were 70 assets created in June. God, I yep. sounded like shit there. Let me say that again, please. Just for the record. So 70 assets were created in June. Mm -hmm, that's right. That's what I sound like when I don't have See, phlegm in my throat. Well, just real quick along those lines, what you were talking about right, right there, Walrus. Um, I, I was in a change while I had phlegm in my throat. I yeah. I asked him exactly that. I asked him, like, what's the change over time? Has, has it increased? Because you're trying to figure out are people starting to make tokens more on bit shares because of what we did with whale shares? I would well, like to kind of see way, that like, too. Whale shares and beyond bit change fucking constantly. It's really chaotic. Well, something like narwhals has went down and never came back up, then it probably never will. So you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, so it's so it sounds to me like it's something that I talked to Walrus about, and I was like, I would like to, I mean, not Walrus, to talk to Nader about, and said it would be something that I'd like to see. Um, I, I I would like to see if there's like an increase over the past. I mean, I know you don't have, you haven't looked at like many. It's not a longitudinal study by any stretch of the imagination yet, but um, 
we can kind of maybe garner something from it. Uh, yeah. So the data is there in, but in, in general, um, the asset creations is the leading operation type for collecting fees. Uh, given that the majority of the fees are collected from asset creation and ac account related, uh, you know, functionality, uh, is that not kind of like a justification for potentially, uh, creating uh, rate limited free transactions, you know, for sending or creating, you know, uh, trades on the DEX. So the majority of fees are, are taken from asset creation. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but uh, so CM... wow, we've actually made like a huge dent. In oh, hold on. Everything in the past month. Hold on. What, you said that CM Steam was going to say something. Yeah. yeah I, uh, do you mind repeating your question, CM? Because uh, I was I didn't quite get it. Yeah. So it's basically. The majority of the fees that we collect are from creating assets and, uh, you know, creating accounts and updating of those accounts and like uh, the transferring of assets and the creation of like trades on the de decentralized exchange make up less than 10% uh, of the total collected fees. So, you know, by creating, by severely reducing the fees, you know, potentially that could draw in more users to trade and create accounts and assets you know where we primarily get our fees from okay I yeah got a question. Right. Are, you, are you sure it's a good idea to reduce fees for creating the token because like well it, i think they're gonna do it in any way you might as well get as much I, as you can out of it right like like well i think cm did, did i understand your point which was that you were thinking well if we maybe there has been discussion about reducing fees for these other operation types, transfers and or, and market orders, um, and since and with the argument being well, those are two different things between creation fees and market orders. Those are two different things, right? Between the between 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 which two did you say? Creation fees and market orders. Those are two different things. Yeah, depending on what we're creating, right? They're two different ones. So if I understood um, Custom Miner's point, which was if we reduce the fees of transfers and uh, limit orders to kind of zero and just instead use rate limiting, uh, then it wouldn't necessarily have a big impact on the fees collected by the blockchain. Is that your point? Yeah. Um, I... Sorry, were you talking to me? It's or a very valuable, that's a very valuable point. I think he's yeah, talking to minor. you. Oh, yeah. I mean, like if we attract more people to trade on our exchange, then more people will be creating assets and creating accounts and upgrading accounts, which is where we primarily get our fees from. We could. I, I mean, it's certainly um, financially, I think it would be a reasonable thing to try. Um, and then I guess my question is, you know, is that what is limiting participation, considering that the fees, I think, are pretty low anyway, the way they're right now? I don't think the fees are a problem. I think the fees. Maybe right. you should like have a fee, like the, how many of the token you want to create, because there's people that have made like ten billion of the token that has absolutely no value, and that really doesn't help us. You know what I mean? Well, I I know I've made tokens for people because they said they can't afford it. They have said that to me. Um, but what they're talking about, I think, Walrus, is rate limiting, which would be more like what Steam does, like where you have bandwidth, essentially. Uh, if, if I'm correct, I mean, is that what you guys are talking about? I think so. Switch right? over to that model. Yeah, I mean, like if you were able to put up like your potential offer for like a very low amount and then when it does get filled, that's when we start putting on fees, you know, uh, I think yeah. we might see more potential trades up in the decks and stuff. I'm talking about think... random people making a token that has 10 billion total supply and then issuing 6 billion, 50 million of it and acting like they're rich because they sold it to each other for 30 bit shares apiece. You know what I mean? Well, that's the free market those people got to want to anyway, right? But anyway, back to what you were saying, Custom. Sorry about that, man. No, sorry. I pretty much made my point. Basically, like, uh, 
our primary fees come from uh, free, uh, you know, the, the creating of assets and mm. the creating of accounts. So driving more people to our exchange is probably the, uh, you know, a good idea. And also, so I think, you know, that's a worthy debate. And since it is so low, uh, we could do an experiment like that. Um, but also just to give an idea right now. So I starting with this report, I was able to add in the actual number of operations by operation type, in addition to what the fees were. And so if you go and take a look at the report, for example, uh, the June report, and take a look at table 573 and table 574, it lists the number of operations for transfers and the number of operations for limit order creations, which is placing an order, uh, placing an order on the market. And just looking at limit orders, the placing an, a new order on the market. So there were approximately about four and a half million operations um, with the fees as they currently are. So, you know, that that's the question is that, you know, do we think that we'll have a significant increase in uh, limit order creations by reducing the fees to uh, essentially zero and maybe with some rate? Limit? Honestly, I don't think anybody has a problem with the fees in there. I don't think that'll help anything. I'll tell you the truth. Right. That was your question. Maybe, I mean, I think that's that's CM's kind of question and suggestion, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think there's something to that, you know. I Here's mean, my thought. If somebody comes out and says, we have free I don't think trans... I don't Hold on, let me... Well, let me... Uh, I'm just... I'm going to make this one point. If somebody comes out and says to people... Like, let's say there's two hot dog stands. One of them says very cheap hot dogs. The other one says free hot dogs. Where will the line start first? Probably free. That's assuming people see both hot dog stands. That, well, that is assuming that they see both hot dog stands, but we've already noticed that there are people out there who use a lot of money to do nothing but clone existing technology that's innovative and use that money that they saved by not having to innovate on their own to advertise a clone and lies. We've already seen this happen for a BitShares based clone that pretends to be something for, for on EOS and pretends that, Bit, that ByteMaster is an advisor on it. Um, they took the open source code. They're going to take a bunch of money from people and beg for people and people are going to beg for regulation, which is, I thought, what we were hoping that we would never have to worry about. So. What I guess my point is, though, that this happened already. If people think that it won't happen again and that people aren't going to get hurt by this, then I think that that we should that we should be always considering, you know, what the competition would do and say, if we can do it and it doesn't harm us and it only really could help us, then maybe we should try it. But I can kind of see what you're talking about while it's like people don't really complain about set the fees of sending things or trading. Uh, they do create, they do complain to me about account, uh, uh, long-term lifetime membership accounts, right. account creation, the cost for that and the cost for creating an asset. But then again, we probably want the cost for an asset to be a little bit expensive. Yeah, I mean, so that it's not so that it doesn't create necessarily spam or dust, but that could also be filtered back by by CM's a thought of uh, rate limiting as well. I'd be interested to hear more about it. Maybe maybe custom miner, since this is your your segment, you could dig into it a little bit. Like, do you agree with Talkinator on that point? Well, on the rate limiting. Yeah, that it would actually be um, that it would be kind of a protective measure in ways. Yeah, I think it would be beneficial. I'm not sure about a protective measure. I think I might have missed that, but I mean, uh, I think keeping the account and asset 
creation fees is a good idea, but you know, uh, making it free to put up a potential trade would encourage more people to put up trades, which would improve liquidity and people coming to us and stuff. Oh, so no change, no change to the asset creation at all. Just keep it completely where it's at. Um, it's it's a little bit pricey. Account creation, keep it at that, but make it like whenever you're in there, it's free. Like maybe free when you get a lifetime membership. Well, perhaps you know pegging it to the USD uh, instead of uh, you know setting it at B- uh, in BTS. You know to which the committee has to change it when the price fluctuates uh, would be advisable, you know? That way we set it and then we forget about it. I agree. So between those two ideas of rate limiting, rate limited free transactions for, let's say, market orders and transfers versus um, having fees um, de- having fees explicitly defined on the network in an, uh, in a market peg ac- asset like BitUSD, between those two ideas, what do you think is your priority? Uh, probably the transactions. I mean, you know, the committee at the moment has the, the ability to change the fees anytime, but the other would require development. Well, I guess also the USD pegging would require development in some kind of script, perhaps. Yeah. I think we still need to make it easy for them to do that. Because it seems like it's very difficult and they don't get paid anything. You know what I mean? The committee for doing that. Yeah. Well, I think, right. I think, um, both are, both are, both are, uh, interesting ideas. And then I, it's a matter, I think of prioritizing and then of course, getting approval from everybody. Yeah, this is something that we should probably look into. I, I mean, I'm I'm interested in seeing. I know how I'll vote for it because I think that I think rate limiting has proven itself now. I, I really, and I think that we can do some clever little tricks um, using it. So I, I'm I'm very interested in it. I know how I would vote for it. I agree with Walrus. Like, what would changing fees do? Not very much as far as people complaining about certain things like that. But what it would do is it would put us a very, like, that's a step in the direction of EOS anyway. You know what Here's I mean? Here's something like, that I think. That, like, the fee for creating a token should depend on how much you're making. Like, if you're going to make $10 billion possible and issue $6 billion, then that should cost quite a bit of money. That's a lot. You know what I mean? Versus if you're going to make 150000 you know what I mean? They, they shouldn't cost the same. Hmm. Yeah, there's, you see, there's a lot of different things that we can do. And especially, I really like the idea of what, what Custom Miner is saying, because free is like the honeypot to bring the flies, right? And then when they're in the honeypot, now, you know, now you've got them there. So now you can, you know, trap them to make honey for you. <laughs> Why do you want a jar full of bees or flies? Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. You really brought up a good point. Free, what I mean is free is something that attracts a certain type of person versus oh. isn't something you're about to talk about, something like a develop it, development today. Like, who are you trying to attack? Flies to honey? Do we really want to attract people that are going to make a token that there's 10 million of that really has no purpose? Well, that's what I'm saying is like with creative things that like increasing, you could increase the, the create the cost to create a token. Right. And, and use potentially use rate limiting to bring in people and increase the cost for other things. And I don't see how I, I might be seeing it wrong too. So because I, I haven't, I don't have all the ideas as far as what custom miner. Maybe you can give some background as far as how you see rate limiting working in the shares. Well, you know, every once in a while, people do complain about having to pay for fees. You know, and I mean, if if someone is worried about 
you know, paying for a fee uh, and they get like, I don't know, 50 free transactions a week or something like that, just throw an example out there, then that might encourage them to stay with the BitShares Dex, promote it to people they know, perhaps even create a, a buy a lifetime membership, which is where we primarily get our fees from. You know, if we're talking about but less than 10% of our fees come from uh, many different transactions of which, uh, or well, different types of transactions of which, you know, perhaps less than 5% is from filled orders. Uh, you know, it's not, I think the benefit is greater than the 5% that we'd be losing, you know. So maybe I can chime in a little bit with some uh, something that might be of interest and relates to Custom Miner's point. So I think recently, it was approximately one or two months ago, the committee changed the fees for account creation. And so let me just give you four numbers to think about in terms of the number of operations as they changed oh, from March, April, May, and June. Okay, so let me just get this first. So during the month of March, when before the before the fees for account creation were changed, there were account creations. There were uh, four thousand three hundred account creations during the month of April. That increased to approximately six thousand during the month of. During the month of May, that increased from 6,000, is what I just said, to 97,000. Last in June, it went from 97,000 to 170,000. So there is a big difference for the number of operations of account creations between April and May. And I think the committee, I'll have to try to find it, but the committee changed the fees for that operation sometime in that time frame. So the question is, okay, is it because the committee changed the fee or was it just a sudden surge of interest in bid shares? And I think that's the open question for me. There was a sudden surge in interest in bid shares because that's when well shares came out. Also May is okay. when the recent bubble started. So yeah. there's a huge surge of interest in crypto in general. Well, okay. that's yeah. I, I love, I, I think that whale shares contributed quite a lot. I actually know that we have numbers to show it, but I also think it's important that we recognize that EOS was another big reason because I saw the BitShares telegram literally like double in the number of people in it over the course of, you know, maybe the past two months. Mm-hmm. So basically, there were there are many factors, I guess, is my point. Now, yeah. custom miner, is there anything that I would like to continue on? Anything that you feel? What was the difference between June and July? Just out of curiosity. Uh, don't yet have that number. But between okay. May and between May and June. May was uh, 170,000. June. June actually was a drop. It was a drop down to 97,000. Just... So for piece of 20, custom. Profit sharing and dividends for user issued assets. Have you thought about the potential for something like a service where you do where it does it for user issued assets? Like we get it paid for, but we but we would create a service that would do this and have tokens for it, and those tokens are used by the token creator to essentially subscribe for that service on BitShares to that service on BitShares. Like you have to pay uh, Divi's, Divi coin, <laughs> you know, to open up and like 
12 of them a year um, to have dividends on your token. And now the, you know, that could be something that, that we could actually monetize BSIPs essentially, as I guess what I'm talking about, create tokens for BSIPs where that service makes money for people who invest in it. Hey, call me crazy, but I think it should cost more, like a lot more. To create a token with ten billion total and a six billion original issue, then it does to create one hundred and fifty thousand total supply and fifty thousand original issue. All right, do you want me to talk about the BSIPs? I don't know what Walsh is on about. I mean, with yeah, regards dude. to the BSIP twenty, the the dividends for user issued assets, you can certainly do that through like an external mechanism where you, you know, you take who you, you basically grab who the, the asset holders are uh, and their holdings and, uh, you know, create an additional issuance of that token and then manually transfer the tokens to them. But, you know, BSCP 19s and 20 kind of propose like an, a semi-automated manner of distributing, uh, you know, additional tokens or, or well, through 20 at least is through the additional tokens. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking is like, could it be automated? Something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. What would be best would be if you could Have set, yeah, if you could say, right, I, I want to create a user issued asset and uh, at this day of the month, I want to issue 1% extra uh, to every asset holder or something like that. And it would just, you know, automatically do so perhaps. All right. I'm going to say this. I've literally seen people create a 10 billion total slide but- token. At least six billion of it, and trade it between themselves so it was worth thirty bit shares, and then like act like they're rich. Well, that's fine. That's going to get destroyed. Yeah, that's the free market. But what I'm kind of wondering is if they create that token, and I'm just, maybe we could charge money for 10 billion dividends. Be worth cost. You know what I mean? Like for the di- one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm guessing, I'm thinking that the numbers of tokens don't matter so much as maybe the usefulness of them. So if you want to create dividends and add dividends onto your token, it costs more. But the BSIP costs us money, so it should give us money in return (laughs) kind of thing, right? There was something like this uh, a couple of years ago where you could invest in a project and the person would give you coins. It wasn't on a blockchain. It was pretty centralized. Uh, but I think finding that it failed miserably. But uh, finding that and digging it up might give you some uh, a nice little palette to work off. Well, on the project that I was thinking of directly seems to be failing miserably anyway. But they were going to fail miserably anyway. I, I'm just saying, like, shouldn't it cost more to create 10 billion tokens than it does? 150,000. No, because it doesn't cost the network anymore to, you know, to have a million tokens and it would be 150,000 tokens. There's no difference at all. Well, it does because then you got to train more. Nah, like. Well, everybody's saying uh, should not. Does anybody agree or disagree? Yes or no. If you agree, yes. If you disagree, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think the quantity is significant. I agree that the quali- the quantity is not significant, just like stocks and stock market. And but a big reason for that, Walrus, is if you start regulating stuff like that, there's a lot of work that has to go into every specific contingency that might happen. And it's a lot of work for regulating something that's very little consequence in the end. Yeah, okay, I understand that. And, and and kind of just and the resources that look like you said are that go into and, and does it even help in the end? Um, but I, I am very interested in the dividends. Uh, I'm very interested in the dang coin age too. Right, go ahead, custom. You have you have. I I can talk about what I have to talk about in five minutes, and we've got 25 minutes left. So. Uh, let's talk about this stuff. Like I'm personally interested in kind of doing what Walrus is talking about, like adding value to these tokens and maybe charging for them. But 
I, you know, that's just a, a side topic of what you're talking about here. So I'll step back and let you step up and, and take the helm, man. All right. I'll just pretty much brain dump my topics that I've been doing this week. Uh, it won't take more than like five, 10 minutes. So I submitted a pull request for my uh, BSIPs uh, 19, 20, 21, and 22 uh, to the BitShares BSIP repo. So uh, 19 is introducing the profit sharing or dividends for uh, BTS and market paid assets on the BitShares DEX via the redistribution of fees. Uh, 20 uh, is similar, you know, uh, dividends for user issued assets on the BitShares DEX, either through, you know, uh, redistribution of uh, market fees or through the issuance of additional tokens. Uh, BICIP 21 uh, introduce the bill, introduces the ability to query coinage of assets held by individuals upon the BTS DEX as to, you know, to take coinage into account for uh, dividends uh, so that, you know, if you hold a token for longer, you get more than someone who's just bought it for the, the, the dividend day, basically. So, uh, and then BSIP 22 proposes the introduction of expiration of votes cast within the BitShares network so as to encourage an active voting population and uh, active campaigning uh, by those who d desire to be voted into power. You know, people, uh, people pass away eventually, so, you know, their votes shouldn't be permanent, much like they aren't permanent in real life, uh, you know, government elections. Uh, with regards to the other stuff I've been doing this week, so I wrote up a, 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 a post on Steemit about um, brainstorming potential uh, Hadoop MapReduce uh, programming uh, for BitShares, basically trying to... Uh, Hadoop uh, MapReduce is a way to, you know, do large-scale batch processing of data. So the idea is to dump the, uh, the transaction history for all the account, all the holders of, like, a tip... A, a selected asset, then filter through all their asset history for filled orders, work out exactly how much each user has been contributing towards market activity, basically who's the biggest market maker, then using that as a, a, distribu a distribution mechanism, basically like if I have like a thousand USD, I want to distribute it to people who have been actively you know, uh, participating in market making. And it, it's something that would require quite a lot of computation. So it's not, I don't think it's something we could do within the client. Uh, I did, however, create a, a GitHub issue relating to uh, the, just a second, I'll pull it up so I get it. Yeah, so the command get trade history returns the date, the price, the amount, and the value of the trade, but it doesn't return the uh, the user who bought and the user who sold, right? If that was the case, then it wouldn't require like, you know, pulling the transaction histories of say 30,000 people. Uh, we could just do one command, then summarize that and then use that as the distribution. So we'd cut out a ton of work. Uh, so yeah, I'm also asking people like, what would you like to do, uh, you know, batch processing, batch processing wise, you know, crunching a bunch of BitShares data. Uh, and what you could take, what information you could extrapolate from that uh, that data, and then finally, uh, I created a thread on uh, Steemit about algorithm-based assets on the BitShares decentralized exchange. So uh, I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, examples of algorithm-based assets are Hero. You know, the price feed appreciates five percent each year. Uh, then I gave two examples of proposed uh, algorithm-based assets: uh, Hertz. The, which uh, fluctuates the price feed based on like a sine wave. Uh, so we have, you know, buying and selling uh, phases throughout the year. Uh, and also Nemesis, the opposite of Hero, which is, you know, it depreciates 5% each year. Uh, uh, so basically that thread was trying to encourage people to brainstorm potential uh, alternative algorithm-based algorithm -based assets. And some people have, uh, you know, begun uh, participating in discussion about, you know, the maximum, the uh, you know, variable inputs that we could put into these algorithms. So say if, so, when Hero fully succeeds, you know, when it's a large market pegged asset, uh, uh, you know, we will likely see copycats. Yeah, it definitely. But what I'm saying is that with success, you have copycats. So what yep. is the, what's the maximum price feed appreciation in a year that, you know, uh, a market pegged asset could be stable at? I mean, imagine someone said it to 100% interest, or well, price feed appreciation in a year. Would that work? I don't know. It's uh, up for discussion to a certain degree. It's yeah. definitely a test. 
And that'll vary with time and, uh, and, and market participants. And it's very interesting. Indeed. Real quick. I mean, that one mind. idea scares the shit out of me. I mean, personally, <laughs> it's not well, my bag. But, like... Well, the, here's the thing. I will say this. It's a risky place. <laughs> if you're making a smart coin, is what this is, is what Customizer's talking about. So the idea of smart coins... I understand coins, that. It's well, what, this it's is what for, the smart on, coin's on. based on is but, risky as fuck. And like, yes, 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 yes. Of course. The, the, these can be very risky. These are risky assets because like what custom miners saying, but I'm saying yeah, this to people... I understand it. It's just risky as shit. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Walrus, I'm, I'm explaining it for people who are listening in who don't maybe know. You know what I mean? So okay. Sometimes yeah, you're going to hear me talk about that, but yeah. Okay, so this is a place like... There's something called ant shares where everybody can make their own user issued asset. Essentially, that's what it is. And it's worth like $300 million. A lot of people apparently don't realize that we have UIAs, but we, yes, we have UIAs. We've had them from the very beginning. Um, but we also have things like what customizers talking about these algorithmic coins, these smart coins, frigging programmable coins based on whatever algorithm you think might work it probably won't there will be some that actually <laughs> surprise us well right? honestly that's that's bit share's greatest strength but most of them aren't gonna work yeah. yes yes but like that's what custom miner has always been kind of am i wrong am but i the right ones saying that this custom miner like are gonna work are going to work. You know I mean? Yeah, and, and that's going to be... And it's kind of like, or is that what you're kind of saying? Like those, when we find those that work, it's going to be a huge... We're going to be like, oh, that was a hit. That was a gold mine. Uh, these, that was all that risk obviously yeah. exists for a reason. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, you do have to, when we're talking about, well, when we're brainstorming these potential algorithm-based assets, uh, you have to, do have to take into account the real potential for, you know, a global settlement, aka these black swan events, you know, uh, BSIP 18, which is currently funded uh, and under development is, uh, you know, trying to find uh, solutions, you know, to recovery of a black swan event. So hopefully it won't be as risky as it currently is to, you know, create your own market pegged asset. But I think that, as you said, when we find uh, an appropriate algorithm with the correct settings and stuff, it will be a massive game changer that the real world, uh, you know, day trading, you know, in the world will uh, really take notice of. I mean, look at Hertz, you know, I'm promoting this idea of my own that's not out yet. But, uh, you know, if you trade Hertz against the US dollar, you know, you buy it uh, half a dollar, sell it, one dollar fifty and do that 12 times a month you know i mean that's that's pretty it's not really that risky the only point it, that is risky is what if everyone was to settle at the one dollar fifty at the top would that cause a global settlement it's you know that's the only real risk uh yeah I'm a little, so what's you're trying to uh mitigate uh volatility with all these well it's not so much like price volatility i don't care what it's trading at what i'm worried about is uh, if there is like you know a, a global settlement event that nobody loses money because of like a misconfiguration in the first yeah. place so talking about it and then probably doing uh you know trial runs in the bitchers testnet is probably advisable for some of these more complex algorithms i would say i would say being able to give them out to, to like to, to people or well I, being able to start them and find a, a cheap way for people to get to participate is is a very valuable um, thing to do. But I think that we, you should definitely always tie some profit motive to it. Like on the test net, the the person you know who gets the most you know come up with a couple things that are are valuable and give actual tokens for them participating in it, so you can keep them moving forward on it, you know, and actually get something close to a live event in terms of people actually like taking the market seriously. When you put profit mode, not that that's a bad idea, but when you put profit mode on stuff, you're going to get people who produce stuff purely for profit instead of out of the passion of the project. And that can get dangerous. 
I mean, in, in a testnet phase, you don't have that profit motive. So potentially you wouldn't be testing, uh, you know, scenarios which would happen in production. I mean, like, you know, if everyone was to, to settle at the very top uh, phase of Hertz, that's probably not something that people would try out in testnet unless that was a scenario that which tested, uh, you know, on purpose. I mean, with regards to these, the algorithm, it's, that sounds like kind of complex. All it is is a very simple script uh, in a price feed script, right? So Wacow or his uh, price feed scripts and X0C's, you know, BTS tools. It's like maybe two or three lines in Python that you run, compare the current dates and spit out the appropriate uh, price feed. And basically that's all that changes, uh, yeah. My understanding is saying something. He says, um, Hertz makes no sense to me. Ponzi is softer, but maybe I'm missing things. And and I think what I think it is, is it's something that we should really consider. I think, I think um, Walrus is 100% right. For a newbie to get into these kinds of coins is like, you better be there just for like figuring it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't go get into this to make money, like to become a, a super wealthy person, because this is this is like the bleeding edge, really. Smart coins on a, on an exchange like us, while while all these other chains are still trying to figure out how the racist guy ever. You're lying, dude. <laughs> well, the point the point that I'm making is like that there uh, there is risk that. And there's a lot. I'm gonna of make it. a UIA, and I'm gonna have all the bit shares and all this thing. It, it's but gonna be pink sheet land, no matter how you cut it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm gonna have all the bit shares and all this thing. Well, but, uh, regardless, let's let's keep on topic here, um, and, and it's because it's, this stuff is very important, guys, and we only have an hour, okay? So, um, with with something like these smart coins, it's it's something that. Like I said, Walrus is right. Custom Miner, in my opinion, I think is right too, uh, because I think it's something that we should be doing the R and D on. And I liked that Talkinator started today and talked about the amount of money that the Dex is bringing in already, right? The amount of of value that we have. I think that there's no there's nothing wrong with you know with us paying a little bit to have these things on a test net to play with and coming up with some, you know, building some little infrastructure to do it. Or uh, whatever. Fuzzy, can I cut in for a minute? Sure. No, um, way, fuck off. Because uh, yeah, that's basically what I've been working on. I, I was hoping actually to have it done before, uh, you know, this um, hangout, hangout, but uh, maybe it's good that I didn't, um, you know, just to throw out, because basically that's what I've done all week ripping trying to rip this apart and then every time i think i sort of understand everything that's going on and i'm like oh I, am i sure about that but um you know going back to this issue uh i mean i put together the whole test net and everything i was running it actually off of a scaleway server um you know uh, for a few dollars a month which is sort of amazing in itself i even got eos running there kind of outlined it in what I'm trying to write up, but the bigger point is, you know, the issue came up where you know, we're literally able to cross the offer when you're buying the bid. Just you know, you can pay uh, any amount, you'll get filled at your fat finger price versus the uh, inside offer. And what I'm actually seeing, going back to settlement prices and such, it looks like basically everything is becoming a margin. Don't call how much I love you. What's that? Oh. Okay. Okay, I thought it was uh, um, you know, basically what what looks like it's happening is every time uh, if someone's in there with a sort of a, um, a, a debt obligation and they're going to do a short sale, um, the way the system looks like it's interpreting everything. And I'm actually, frankly, I've seen this uh, people talking about this going back to BitShares 2.0 in 2015 when it came out uh, in, in some fashion or another. What it looks like is going on is if you uh, put in a price to buy above the offer, it seems as if it's getting interpreted as a margin call, um, you know, and just filling you. So it's actually trying to match up on the inside, but it's just giving you like, a, uh, you know, the, um, the, the throwaway um, margin call price without adding any sort of adjustment. And, um, you know, that's what I'm uh, adding in, in there. But I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's also good to throw it here once more and just see, does anyone have any alternate uh, perspective on that? Anyone else rip the code apart and see that? Tell me I'm just completely wrong and I'm missing something. 
So for me, I think it, it's um, a little surprising to me, but perhaps, um, but perhaps you found something and I haven't seen it. Um, if by any chance, um, have you written this up somewhere so I could maybe look I, at I'm it? I'm about to post it. Like I said, I was hoping to have it done, but I mean, I have um, you know, one example after another, but it always seems to be related to uh, what was interesting. It didn't happen on the test net. And I couldn't understand why at first. And then what I realized, wait a second, no one's really shorting hey necessarily hey on Alex. the test net. I'm going to put on my moderator hat, guys, because Custom Miner signed up. Okay. So I would like us to keep on the topic that people sign up for. If you want to talk about something, please do what everybody else does and sign up. You make money for it. You log it so everybody can read it before the Hangout and prepare their own answers to think about it themselves. And you don't interrupt other people. I want to make this very clear today because I'm, I've been kind of leaning back a little bit. But we have to do that. We have to have respect for the people who have signed up because that's the way that these are set up, okay? I, like I said, I actually did want to sign up and I just... Got it's okay. Thrown off. We do yeah, these, no, I Alex, need to cut it in. So we do these every week, buddy. <laughs> there is no concern. You can sign up as soon as I post this post, okay? And I will even post it in the whale shares chat so you can see it. Well, this was just like a really big issue that I just didn't really want to get wrong either. That was it. Yeah. I understand, but it also is a big issue to bring into somebody else's um, segment when the entire community like like talkinator said like not everybody's read about it here and right and you haven't signed up which is the point of all of this we have to maintain some structure or else listeners are going to say what the hell is going on here and they're just not going to listen no i hear you that's fine okay I, sorry customizer is is there anything that you feel like we should uh cover today because uh, there's a lot that i can cover that i would have loved to talk about with all four of these bsips obviously we didn't get to all of them today i will ask you to please sign up for this next week too so we can continue talking about it because these conversations never really end right and i think we can talk about it for weeks on end straight um but anything that you would like to leave on as far as any notes as far as what we've talked about today uh yeah sure uh check out my rsvp post uh check out the links that i submitted uh, and i'll gladly uh, have in-depth discussions about any concerns or you know interesting topics you have to raise regarding you know the bsips the the hadoop map produce or you know the algorithm based assets even if it's just a silly idea you know there, there are no stupid ideas when we're brainstorming basically so thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on Beyond Bitcoin Hangouts. Uh, I want to speak about the, the coin market cap ad campaign. I'm quite interested in that next. And I just wanted to throw in my thanks also to you, Custom Miner, for uh, those. all these topics are really uh, interesting and helpful, especially the BSIP write-ups, um, as well as the algorithm um, assets. So thank you. I'm just glad to see that these types of ideas are growing because of these tokens that we're able to hand out. It, like it helps if it helps custom miner to be able to like buy food and put food on the table instead of working an extra 20 hours a week somewhere i would love it yeah i, totally. hope, I hope it i hope this is the case custom <laughs> yeah this this is my job <laughs> well well and, and a lot of this stuff what you're bringing up these are are none of us know exactly what's going to happen with this stuff we are literally like people in Bitcoin are still thinking, how do we increase our transactions per second to a point where people aren't waiting forever for, you know, <laughs> how do we how do we really, truly decentralize ourselves, from destroying ourselves? Right. Like. And we are here talking about smart assets and if they're going to work and if it's a Ponzi scheme or not. If people are going to get screwed over by this this highly complex instrument who knows um people will get screwed over with these things but i think it's that's only if they're paying real money um but having competitions for trading on this stuff 
we could learn a lot for a pretty cheap price. Um, so if the politics gets in the way custom and you want to try to do some, um, some contests on things like this, let me know. Cool. Cheers, man. And can I just jump in for 10 seconds quickly? Talkinator, you, of course you can. All right, thank you. Uh, earlier um, in the middle, I spoke about the price, the transaction fees for asset creations, and I think I spoke about it twice and, and two times was reversed. So I just wanna clarify. For the month of May, the number of operations for asset creations was 97,000. And then finally, for the month of June, it was 170,000. So it actually increased from May to June. Okay, that was it. Nice. Thank you. Well, that's a that's a good change then. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to give real quick an update um, with regard to what we are doing in whale shares. Um, what we're going to be doing with the worker proposal. Um, and the forums. Uh, there's two forums actually, but we'll get into that really quick here. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that we are going to, we're planning on doing $25,000 for a work proposal. I've already paid for a lot of the stuff to be built up front without them having to encounter the politics in BitShares, but I do ask that you guys consider paying them a little bit more uh, for continual work and expansion of this later on. Uh, but we have a front end that is going to, that, well, it, it already works. It's not connected to BitShares yet. I need to find out if there's, if the worker GUI is done yet. I've, I reached out, actually, I asked Custom Miner because I figured you might be the person who would know first because you're always on GitHub. Do you happen to know if the worker if the worker proposals are accessible via GUI yet? Uh, yeah, I, I messaged you this on uh, Telegram. So the latest cool. BitShares UI code does have it already implemented. It's just a matter of uh, compiling and releasing the latest uh, client for you know the public. If you're to self-compile the BitShares UI, uh, when you go to the worker proposal page, there is an option to you know click create worker proposal and uh you know cool so totally. it's possible so it's possible then for them to link it up to directly to the the decks so they can yep. make okay from that form that we've created okay so that'll probably be one of our next steps that we'll be looking into but we're going to have just a quick overview it's going to be four different times that we're going to go with a weak coin market cap uh ad saying the bitshares blockchain is hiring and we'll have, I'm going to have a competition for the banner. It's going to make, you know, so we're going to have a bunch of people on Steam it who are artists kind of competing for the best banner. Um, that'll be free to BitShares. Um, we're going to give a, an after action review for each of them, essentially data that's pulled from this just to kind of, this is just an experimental kind of like outreach effort to see how much, you know, how much interest we get from saying that the blockchain is hiring. Um, allow people to make an account from there and put in a work proposal will be the next step I'll talk to them about. Um, if you had custom miner, I don't know, I haven't checked yet, but if you haven't, if you could consider sending me a GitHub link or anything uh, that I could send to the devs who are working on it, I would love that. Um, now, with that said, uh, whale shares and beyond bits last week has paid out well over $8,000 to people um, in terms of upvotes. And there's a pretty active market going on BitShares for each of them now. Um, so there are people, you know, just playing around with their cryptocurrencies to buy these. Um, and people are, are making money off of the upvotes, the Steam dollars and the Steam power that they get from it. And we're encouraging people who are creating high quality content or doing work that they would like to prove what they can do as far as development before they, um, you know, go through the, the bureaucratic hurdles that have been intentionally put in place for bit shares to get workers. Uh, we are there to help them. So 
I just want to let everybody know that these worker proposal sessions, if you know somebody who wants to do something cool and they're like, I don't want to not get paid, but I also understand that BitShares community needs to see what I'm capable of and that I'm legitimate, then we can leverage that and we can leverage these tokens in the hangouts for people who are working on worker proposals. Um, so let them know that. Uh, I would really like to support and show people and also incentivize them to log on the blockchain, what they're doing to upvote themselves. Because one of the biggest things people complain about in coding is lack of documentation. And that's not just bit shares and cryptocurrency in general, that's everywhere. So um, with that said, just one real quick reminder that we have the EOS talk forums that we're putting up. Um, they're in beta. They use chain BB and I would really love, we can spin them up very quickly. Uh, we have it ready for bit shares. Uh, I'm just going to remind everybody that I'm going to be talking with Xerox about some things. I think that we should have multiple foundations, but I'm going to definitely work with the BitShares Foundation that he's running. Um, and I think that they should be partial run, partially running the, the um, forms if we do have it. But I'm not exactly sure what the community is going to say about it. So I would urge you guys to you know, go out and talk to your friends who use the BitShares talk forums. I look at them and they're anemic and I'm sad because that's where I grew up in crypto and they're anemic because people can get paid for posting now. So most of them are going to post to steam. So why don't we just use forums that pay our community and make them wealthier over time? Um, because those are going to be the people who are the experts, who in, in our ecosystem who don't need to be trained and they're going to be the ones who play around and trade more and use their resources to help the community. I just see this as a perfect uh, little synergistic situation, but um, we don't obviously don't have time to talk about it too much, but it is going to be something I'm going to continually bring up and maybe we will have some time to talk about it. So and thank you very America. much. Yeah, and, and thank you, Talkinator, for joining up. I, I'm going to just remind everybody, the people who speak here, I'm going to give them um, beyond bits based on how much we get in upvotes. So always try to tell people to upvote our, our Hangouts and stuff if you are part of them, because that's going to be how you're going to get beyond bits and whale shares tokens is going to be by participating in various Hangouts. And by doing that, you get up votes that you can give yourself or other people. And some people even sell them on the market. So I don't advise that because anything can change, but they do. And there's always going to be value in them because I'm not powering them down, uh, at least unless I have to get a heart surgery or something. <laughs> but barring something catastrophic, you're going to see fuzzy building for a while. Uh, but Thank you guys for joining up. Talkinator, you're going to be getting some tokens today. Customize, you're going to be getting some tokens today. Um, it's at like $470 the last I checked. So you guys are going to get a healthy chunk. Thank you it. for signing up. Thank Thanks. you for participating.